In this week's tips and tools video, I'm sharing with you the email marketing tool that I use, which is ConvertKit. Now, before I jump into that, let's just briefly talk about what an email marketing tool is. And I want to keep this video very basic. Um, an email marketing tool is something that allows you to collect email addresses so that you can market to these people via email. It's as simple as that. Um, it's different than just collecting email addresses into your Outlook or your Gmail uh, because you need a way for people to sign up for it or what they call opt in to say, yes, I want to get emails from you. And there's a lot of tools on the market. Um, you may have heard of MailChimp or AWeber, um, Mad Mimi, there's, and there's many, many more. Um, MailChimp is a very popular email marketing tool, especially for new business owners, because it's free up to like 2,000 subscribers um, or email addresses. And I've used MailChimp for other businesses that I've owned. I chose to use ConvertKit, though, for um, the reason of really it's how it keeps track of your email subscribers and how it counts the number of subscribers. So in MailChimp, Let's pretend you have a newsletter that you want people to sign up for and you're separately, you're going to do like a five day email challenge. Well, in MailChimp, you would set those up as two different lists so that people can sign up for your newsletter and maybe that goes out once a week. And then separately, they want to sign up for this five day challenge. So you create a list for that and that person has to sign up for that separately. Well, in MailChimp, that counts as two subscribers, two different email addresses. It's a list-based focused email tool. And again, it's great, especially when you're in the beginning. But at some point when you start to cross over, you know, getting a couple thousand subscribers or even just trying to manage and get visibility of, hey, how do I know if Jane Smith is on my newsletter and also in this challenge and, you know, um, without looking up each list, you don't really have the view of an individual person or a subscriber. That's the key reason why I chose ConvertKit. Now, I'm not going to get into too many complicated things of how to set stuff up. I am by no means I'm a ConvertKit expert. And in fact, I'm going to share a link near this video for the person that I recommend, if you um, want to, one, check out ConvertKit, and two, you need some help. Her name's Elizabeth Goddard. Um, she goes by Lizzie. And um, if you sign up for ConvertKit through her affiliate link, you get a 30-day free trial. ConvertKit normally does not offer a free trial, so this is a great way to do it. She also, as a bonus, adds a 30-minute one-on-one consultation used however you want, and one month free in her convert kit club, which is her private Facebook group where she is in there like unlimited convert kit support. And honestly, that's I was very quickly um, able to figure out everything I needed to do. And I've got her on speed dial, so to speak, through her Facebook group. Um, so for all things like technical and and how to do things and tutorials for setting it up, I'm going to send you to her. For quick basic overview stuff, ask me, I'm happy to help you. So really today, I just wanted to give you an overview of what the tool looks like. And again, sort of call out the differences um, and why I chose this over MailChimp. Okay, so this could get uh, complicated. Well, not complicated, but I could get really technical very easily. I'm going to try not to do that. I really just want to give you an overview, especially because you can't get a free convert kit trial normally. You may have never seen it. So I just want you to see what's under the covers. So this is the dashboard or the landing page. And it's just showing me on the top how many people have subscribed to one or more of my opt-ins. Now, I'm not going to get into that. Today, I'll do a separate training on the kinds of things that you might want to create, um, free content for people to sign up and get it. As much as we'd like to think people are just going to give us their email address and sign up for whatever we want, most of the time, people need to know they're getting some sort of value and they're willing to give you their email address in exchange for that. So we'll, we'll pick that up in a masterclass one day. 
Um, but this is letting me know that I have people who've signed up for my Im impactful introduction waiting list. I had people actually sign up for the impactful introduction challenge back in January. I have a four things to stand out and roar PDF. So it's letting me know exactly what these people are subscribing into. And these are the sign up forms I currently have created. So, you know, for example, on my website, if you were to go to my impactful introduction page, I'm currently taking signups to get notified the next time I open up this content. So the form, the name, the address, and the button, this is actually ConvertKit that I've embedded onto my website and I've been able to design all around it, whatever I want on my web page to collect the email address. Now, ConvertKit also has its own landing pages. It's got some canned designs to help you do that. And it has other ways of doing it. I'm not gonna get into that a whole lot, again, because it's not important in just understanding the tool. Just know that that's available. I choose to do most of mine embedded on my own site so that it's all just part of my website. So these are four forms that I have in various places for people to be able to sign up for something and give me their email address uh, to do that, okay? So um, just to take a look at what that looks like, so, you know, I'm, I'm just building this form, the name, address, and the button in ConvertKit. And I'm going to grab the code from that. I told ConvertKit I just want to embed that. So you grab this piece of code, you drop it in your website, and you're good to go. Um, but you can do both single and double opt-in in ConvertKit. All that means is a single opt-in, uh, as soon as the person gives you the email address, they're on your list, as soon as they click that button. A double opt-in means they, they enter their name and email and click the button, but then they get an email sent to them that they have to click a link or a button on that to confirm they really wanted to subscribe. Some countries require that. Some people consider that best practice. I personally choose for mine to be single opt-in. If you're giving me your name and email address, I'm signing you up right away and sending you whatever I promised it is I was going to send you. Um, and, uh, there's always an unsubscribe link at the bottom of every email that is required by law. So you can't remove that. Um, so, you know, you get signed up, you don't want my emails anymore. You click the unsubscribe link at the bottom. No big deal. Okay. By the way, don't, um, stress out when people unsubscribe from your list. <laughs> We'll talk more about that too in a masterclass, but that just means they aren't your ideal client. They aren't resonating with you and that's okay. Just let them move along and, um, you know, you don't need to waste money. You know, ultimately when you start getting volumes of subscribers, you don't need to waste time, energy, and money on people who don't want your stuff anyway. That's all right. Um, so, uh, ConvertKit also, when people sign up, you can just take them to like a ConvertKit's confirmation message that just says, okay, you're signed up. Or you can direct them to like a custom thank you page. Um, in this case, when you sign up to get on the waiting list of the impactful introduction challenge, you're taking, I, I'm taking you to this page just says you're in and email is on the way with the details. And then by the way, I promote my Facebook group to come and check me out over there. Um, so ConvertKit supports either of those, either directing them to a page that you want, you know, a thank you page, or you can just show a success message. Um, I'm not going to get into all of the other options here. I just want to talk about this conceptually, but pretty much, you know, whatever you need to do for setting up a form, I have not run into anything I can't do. Now, people sign up for your email and that makes them a subscriber. And I'm blurred out, obviously, people's contact information here, so not to share anyone's information. But I just want to show you what this looks like. For each time somebody has signed up for any of my stuff, whether that's a freebie or they said they've interested in something or I'm directing them to a landing page, they still only live in ConvertKit one time. And I'm subscribed myself to everything in my ConvertKit account because I want to make sure everything's working correctly, that if I expect that an email went out to everybody, that I, I see the email. So 
just, just a tip for you, sign up for all your stuff to make sure all the emails are going out okay. Um, so let me just show you what a subscriber record looks like so that you can see how much great information you know. And again, this is one of the main reasons why I chose ConvertKit. This user, me, um, has filled out four forms for four different things, which means I've signed up for my free PDF that I have, my December edition of the Impactful Introduction Challenge, my Impactful Introduction waiting list, the waiting list for my Messaging Mastery Program because that won't open up again for a few months. So this is showing me that I have gone through and actually completed these forms, clicked, you know, filled in my name and address, name, email address, and clicked the button. It also shows that I am associated with what ConvertKit calls sequences. So I'll show you a couple examples of those, but a sequence is a series of emails that are scheduled at some predetermined interval. So for example, for those of you who did my impactful introduction challenge, every day for five days, you got an email with a lesson for the day. Well, I queued those up, well, I could queue those up as a sequence. There's different ways to do things, but you could queue those up as a sequence that automatically every day a different email goes out. So this is showing me all of the sequences that this email address has been associated with. It shows me which segments I have. Now, again, I'm not going to get into the details of how to set these things up, but in ConvertKit, a segment is a way for me to say, of all the people on my list, I, wanted, I want to group or create a segment of people who have indicated that they want no, to know more information about my messaging mastery program, but they are not yet a client. Or I want to create a segment of clients to any of my programs, because if you sign up for any to a client of mine in any capacity, there's a that's noted in ConvertKit. So I might want to send stuff out to any previous clients. So I have a segment that can do that. Or in this example, I ran the impactful introduction challenge in December. And so I tagged people to know that. And I also ran it in January. But I have a segment that says, show me all the people that were in December or January, because if you've ever done my challenge before, I want to send you an email. So think of segments as just a way to group people based on what you know about them. And the coolest thing is, there, is the how do you know that about them? And ConvertKit uses the notion of tags. And I can set a tag with rules. So I could say, for example, I send an email out to you from ConvertKit that says, hey, would you be interested in knowing more about the Impactful Introduction Challenge? Click this link. Now, if you click that link, I already know about you. ConvertKit already knows about you. You do not have to enter your name and email address again. But I can have rules that are running that ConvertKit and I set them up in ConvertKit that says, hey, she clicked that link in her email. So I want you to add a tag that says she's interested in knowing more about the impactful introduction challenge. And so I created a tag that says interested in impactful introduction. And I have a rule that ran that went out on an email that says, do you want to know more? Right. And it landed in there. Now, you'll also notice I happen to tag that I was part of the December Impactful Introduction Challenge and January. So if I were wanting to segment people, we, you know, we talked about creating these segments, anyone who was interested in the Impactful Introduction Challenge, which means they have this tag, but who's not signed up for a specific challenge before, which means they don't have the December or the January tags, I can know that because I'm tagging people with pretty much anything I can think of. You know, if they can take action on it, I can tag them. If they sign up for a form, if they click a link, or I can manually add tags. So I can say, this is a new tag I want to track. And bam, add that. Whoops, why did that not add? Oh. I'm sorry, you add the tag in a different place. Um, but I can select any of my tags that I have set up here and do it manually. So I can select that 
okay, this person booked a power hour session with me. I actually have that automated in a different way, but she booked a power hour session. So I want to make sure that she gets tagged as having been a power hour client so that I can email out like, hey, you had a power hour with me three months ago. Was that helpful? Do we want another session together? So there's all these things that you can do because you know information about each of your subscribers and they only are listed there once. In MailChimp, if I wanted to have the newsletter and I wanted to have the December challenge and then separately the January challenge, that would have been on three different lists. I would have had to have gone and looked at the list, all three of those, to see if this person was signed up for them. Here, it's it's email address focused. So I can see everything about them in one place, which I think is super powerful, right? I'm going to go back to that subscribers tab and you're going to see all those tags. So again, I want to see anybody who signed up for the December impactful introduction challenge. Well, I can click on that and it filters my list for me. Obviously, you don't see the names because I'm blurring those out, but it's showing me 86 people were signed up for the December challenge. 109 people were signed up for the January challenge. I can create a new tag on the fly. I can, all right, this is a new tag. Now, right now, it's just a tag I can manually choose, but I can now choose rules to run. Convert kit calls that, calls that automation. So I can sign you up for an email sequence. So if you were to go to my homepage, carryprice.com, you can sign up to get the four things to stand out and make your message roar. It's a PDF, right? If you went to my homepage and signed up, gave me your name and email address and hit the button, what's going to happen is there's rules that run on that form that says, go subscribe you to a sequence, start giving you the welcome series, the first one being, here's your PDF that you got, and then there's a few emails that you get over the course of a couple days to give you some extra information, and add a tag that says, hey, this person signed up for your freebie, for things to stand out, and now I'm going to know that about that person. Um, it gets even cooler with ConvertKit. So once I know about you and I send an email out from ConvertKit, and let's say I'm thinking of a new offer, and I send you an email and say, hey, would you like to get on the waiting list for the next time, you know, or when I'm ready to launch that offer, or the next time I do the impactful introduction challenge, you don't ever have to sign up again. You don't have to give me your name and email address. If I've sent you the email asking you, you click a link, and by clicking the link, ConvertKit knows all about it, I'm automatically going to tag you. So if I sent you an email that says, hey, come check out um, information about getting a first impressions brand assessment. Are you making a good first impression? And you click the link that takes you to that landing page. Because you clicked the link in my ConvertKit email, I tag you as being interested in that. I then can know if you purchase that from me, you get tagged as a client of a first impressions brand assessment. And so I can send emails out to people who were interested in it, but not yet a client. So if you clicked the link, didn't buy, I could come back and send an email and say, hey, at some point you checked this out. Did you have any questions? Can, you know, can I answer any questions for you? Does this not feel like a good fit for you? And I can engage with you and be smart about how I email you. Make sense? Um, so lots of really cool things, um, broadcasts and sequences, I will talk about very briefly. Broadcasts are emails that you schedule um, once and they go out. And you can schedule them in advance. So you can batch up whether that's your newsletter or it could be your challenge, right? You, you batch it up and you send it out, or you want to send it out right now. doesn't matter. Broadcasts are one-time sends. Sequences are a sequence of emails. So here, for example, I was talking about if you go to my homepage, carryprice.com, and you want to grab your PDF, the, um, you saw the rule, you signed up, I, give, I assign you to this sequence, which means you're going to get these six emails, one a day for six days. Um, because I'm sharing information with you, I'm following up to make sure you got your PDF, etc. So 
I'm able to say, hey, here it is. So the very first thing, immediately after getting assigned to the sequence, you get this email that says, here you go, download your PDF, so excited for you. And like, that's, that's what you get, right? One day later, you get another email from me. Hey, did you download the PDF? If not, here's that link again. And by the way, in the PDF, I talked about brand. Let me talk a little bit more about what that means. So I'm able to like nurture them, educate them, warm them up, you know, and introduce them to me, right? One day after that, the next email goes out. So the sequence is a predetermined number of emails that they just go out on a schedule. And, and you never have to think about that. Anytime somebody signs up, they get these six emails six days in a row. I don't have to do anything once it's set up. Now, all email marketing tools can do that. MailChimp does the same thing, right? You can have a sequence go out with people sign up. But again, they would just be on a separate list. You don't have that single view of your subscriber um, to see all of their activity. So that's a super high level overview of ConvertKit. Again, without getting into a ton of details, I mean, emails, you can do some formatting, I can upload attachments, I can in insert images. I mean, if I go back to this first one, this is an image that I um, added. So you, there's a lot of things you can do in the formatting. Uh, you know, I have my signature and there's all sorts of things you can do. Um, but again, the main reason why I chose ConvertKit is really because each person is a single record and I can see everything that they've done. However, I want to um, define that. These tags, these are my tags. These are things I care about knowing about people. Um, I want to know the history of, um, you know, which emails went out to them. Let me go back to showing you mine because again, I subscribed to everything. Here's the email history. Every email that went out, what date and time, and did I open it or not? So the blue dot, I can hover over it. I actually opened that email. Here's one where I actually clicked a link that was in the email. This one got delivered but never opened. So I can see that about a person, right, of their individual email activity. I also, on any of the emails, and I'll, I'll bring up a broadcast, um, which is just, again, a one-time email that went out, I can see information about that. How many people did it go out to? How many people opened it and by percentage? And what percent percentage actually clicked it? And if you had more than one link, all the links would show up here. It's showing me that eight people clicked this link. So, I mean, you get great visibility. You can see how well your emails are being received. Um, open rates, it's whether your subject line, right, caused them to want to open it. Honestly, if your inbox looks like my inbox, it just might be you haven't gotten to it yet. <laughs> I have hundreds of emails in my personal inbox I just haven't opened yet. So for those poor people, they think that I don't care about their emails. I just maybe haven't read it yet. But this lets you keep track of that. Um, you can see specifically the people that it went to. You can see specifically who opened it, who clicked on the various links. So here's the link. Here's the eight people that clicked on it. Obviously, I'm graying that all out, but you get the point. There's a lot of information you can see about your email activity. Um, and the more that you can analyze that data, the better you can make adjustments for you know, emails that people care about, um, which ones are getting opened more, what sorts of links are being clicked versus not. And, you know, again, we'll do a whole masterclass on email marketing, maybe one of these days. Um, I just wanted to give you a tour of the tool. So if you have any quick questions on that, let me know. Again, I will include the link for Elizabeth Goddard so you can sign up with her affiliate link so that you can get a free trial if you so choose to give it a try for 30 days, just check it out. Even if you're just like practicing creating stuff and signing up for yourself, just so you can see what it's like. Um, but that's the tool that I use and I hope that was helpful. And um, let me know what questions you have. All right. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.